From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. Parler resurfaces online. The URL for the social media platform Parler was updated to show a message from CEO John Mates reiterating the site's self-proclaimed commitment to free speech and pledging to welcome all of you back soon. In a separate interview with Fox News, Mate said he was confident the social network could come back online by the end of January. CNN reports that Parler is now hosted by Epic, which also hosts the fringe websites 8chan and Gab. Amazon suspended Parler from its web services earlier this month, finding the platform failed to implement a system that effectively identified and removed content that incited violence. Darknet forum Jokerstash shutting down. The site's operator said Joker Stash will shut down on February 15th through messages and advertisements on other hacking forums. While no specific reason was given for the closure, the site has received increased attention from law enforcement of late, with Interpol and the FBI seizing multiple servers and several domains that temporarily disrupted operations. Joker Stash has been active since 2014 and served as a trading platform for cybercriminals to trade and sell stolen credit card information and other financial assets tied to numerous data breaches. Microsoft Defender to enable auto-remediation by default. This will be enabled for those Microsoft Defender for Endpoint customers opting into public previews as of February 16, 2021. Microsoft said the change from semi to full automation for remediation was made after data showed that customers with full automation enabled had 40% more high-confidence malware samples removed than customers using lower levels of automation. Once full automation is enabled, Microsoft Defender will auto-create a remediation action that removes or contains a malicious entity found after analyzing suspicious activity. The previous default required manual approval of all remediation actions. The change in defaults will not override device group definitions and can be changed by admins. The NSA appoints a cyber director. The United States National Security Agency announced that Roy Joyce was appointed to head the Cybersecurity Directorate. The division within the NSA was only founded in October 2019, and Joyce will succeed its first director, Ann Neuberger. Joyce has worked for the NSA's Cybersecurity and Signals Intelligence Division since 1989, currently serving as a special liaison for the U.S. Embassy in London. From 2013 to 2017, he served as chief of the NSA's tailored access operations, and before that, he was deputy director of the agency's Information Assurance Directorate. Our sponsor for today's show is Armis. Can you accurately determine whether every asset in your environment is completely visible and whether they adhere to or deviate from your security policies? Chances are you're spending a lot of time and manual effort trying to identify all laptops, servers, mobile phones, cloud instances, and IoT devices in your environment. Find out how Armis Asset Management delivers five times more visibility over other solutions to give you complete confidence that you can see and secure everything in your environment at Armis.com. Signal recovers from day-long outage. The encrypted messaging app confirmed user reports of an outage at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on January 15th, saying it was working to restore services as quickly as possible. The service was finally restored fully as of 7 p.m. on January 16th. Signal said it's been working to add server capacity to its network all week and that a recent surge in new users exceeded its expectations. While it's unknown how many new users Signal received, Apptopia estimates it gained 1.3 million signups on January 11th alone. Signal said the outage did not impact message security, but that users may have to reset their session to receive all messages sent during the outage. WhatsApp delays changes in data sharing policy. One of the major reasons Signal saw such an influx of new users was an announced change in WhatsApp Terms of Service set to go into effect February 8th. This would have allowed merchants using WhatsApp an option to use secure hosting services from Facebook to manage WhatsApp chats, which could use the information for targeted ads, but led to user concerns about further data sharing with WhatsApp's social network parent company. The messaging app reiterated, this update does not expand our ability to share data with Facebook. WhatsApp said it will make new business options available on May 15th. The Commerce Department pulls licenses to supply Huawei. Reuters sources say the U.S. Commerce Department notified semiconductor suppliers of Huawei that it intends to revoke some licenses needed to sell to the company while it remains on the entity list and will reject dozens of applications to do so from other companies. Sources say at least eight licenses were revoked from four companies. Intel previously announced it had received approval to supply some components to Huawei, although it's unclear if it's had any of its licenses revoked. 
Companies have 20 days to respond to an intent to deny notice from the Commerce Department and can appeal the decision. Researcher hijacks top-level domain to prevent abuse. After analyzing the name server records used by all top-level domains, Detectify founder Frederick Almroth found the domain scpt-network.com, which had been listed as the name server for .cd, the TLD for Congo, had been left to expire. Almroth acquired the domain to prevent this, as it could have opened the door for a malicious actor to redirect DNS traffic from legitimate sites to phishing or other websites, as well as passively intercept DNS traffic for surveillance purposes or just generally disrupt the TLD. Almroth is currently working to return the domain to its rightful owner, and the admins of .cd have changed name servers to another domain. Thanks for listening, and be sure to check out the latest episode of CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast entitled Click this link to fail a phishing test. We recorded this just after GoDaddy performed a pretty infamous phishing test, promising a bonus if employees clicked through a suspicious link. Those that did ended up with additional security training as their only reward. Tune in to find out how security teams can respectfully train employees about the dangers of phishing. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.